Hello there everybody, Tyler here, and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be going over this ultimate iceberg about FNAF fan games. FNAF fan games are an interesting breed. There's a lot of great and good ones, some bad and terrible ones, some meh ones, and a whole bunch of stuff going on about them. So much that it fits for an iceberg. Now to be fair, this one is one that uh, I kind of made. There's been a few pre-existing FNAF fan game iceberg charts and I basically grabbed the entries from some of them and added my own entries as well as entry suggestions from friends of mine and organized them as such. Lo and behold, this ultimate iceberg. Before we begin, if you've never seen an iceberg video in your life, basically the top of the iceberg has well known and easy to find information. So well known that it's possible that someone who doesn't follow the topic would likely know. And as the iceberg goes down, the information gets more obscure and less well known. And by the bottom of the iceberg, the information is very obscure, and if you do know about the entry, you're one of if only few people that actually knows about the entry and what it's about. Often or not, the information at the bottom can also be pretty creepy and or weird. As well, if you're new around here, be sure to subscribe down below and turn on the notification bell. Totally optional, but it'd be appreciated if you did. Without further ado, let's get into this huge thing. The Fazbear Fanverse Initiative the Fazbear Fanverse Initiative is a collaboration project that was initiated by Scott Cawthon and announced publicly on August 21st, 2020 for our Reddit post. The goal behind this project was to fund and give support to FNAF fan games, whether that be making official mobile and console ports for the games, making merchandise for the games, and more. The creators and fan games involved being ML Mako's Finders of Candy series, King Carter's Pop Goes series, Nixon's Joy of Creation series, John O'Crum's One Eye of Flumpties, and even allowing Phil Morg, aka Fistnum, to make a funded reimagining of the first Finders of Freddy's game called FNAF Plus. The pre-existing fan game series were getting new games associated with the initiative. The new games being Finance of Candies 4, Pop Goes Evergreen, One Night at Flumpties 3, and the Joy of Creation Reignited Collection, which are essentially going to be remakes of the Joy of Creation Story Mode Reborn in the original. Since then, only one new game associated with the project has been released, that being One Night at Flumpties 3. The fanverse announcement was initially met with praise from both the community and general internet, thinking Scott was being generous by giving these indie creators the ability to monetize their passion projects and their work that was initially all free to experience. Behind the scenes, there's actually a lot that goes into this initiative than the average show on the internet would think. Fan games have to be approved by Scott Cawthon. The biggest rules for approval are that the fan game series must primarily be copyright free, so that when Scott and the fan game developers would go to sell their fan games and whatnot, they obviously wouldn't be met with copyright complaints. That meant no fan games like Treasure Island or Wario's or Sonic's, for example, can make it because their fan games had heavily used copyrighted characters as their antagonists, and even settings and stories like with Magtonite and Jollies, for example. The other big rule for fan game approval for the fanverse was that the fan game in question must either have no to little to moderate mature themes, referring to gore, sexual content, language, and all that. That meant fan games like Day Shift of Freddy's, Finance of Fuckboys, and Finance with 39 were out of the picture, for example. Other aspects of the fanverse's business was that the involved creators had to sign contracts and NDAs, not disclosure agreements, and team members had to sign release forms for port usage purposes. Nowadays in 2022, the reputation of the Fazbear Fanverse initiative is mixed among people in the community. Some people still think it's a great thing. Some people think the concept was good, but how it was turning out wasn't the best. And some people just simply think the thing fucking failed because controversies related to people either involved with the Fanverse or people that were going to be. The whole thing's a mind hype, I tell ya. Five Nights at Candies the Finance of Katie series is a soon-to-be quadrilogy of FNAF fan games created by Emil Mako, which started in 2015. The fan game series' main face being Candy the Cat, who the character himself was actually created by Mako before the first game's development even began. Joined with him throughout the series are Cindy the Cat, Chester the Chimpanzee, Blank the Penguin, Old Candy, Rat and Cat, Finny, as well as all of their withered monster shadow and supposedly fun time variations. This fan game series is known today as one of the most iconic fan game series of all time, spawning currently three games, a remastered version of the first game, and an upcoming fourth game as part of the previously talked about Fazbear Fanverse initiative. These fan games are often praised by people for the interesting characters and stories, and the unique spins that they each had on the previous FNAF games and their formulas. These fan games are popular for a reason. The Joy of Creation 
The Joy Creation is not really a series, but more of a set of games created by Nixon. There are four games of this. There's the story mode that everyone is pretty much familiar with. There's also Reborn, which is the second most familiar one among people. There's also the Halloween version, and there's the original version. And not to mention, Story Mode Reborn and the original are getting remakes as a part of the Reignited Collection associated with the Fazbear Fanverse Initiative. The series' characters are the Ignited Animatronics and the Fallen Animatronics. Ignited Freddy, Ignited Bonnie, Ignited Chica, Ignited Foxy, Ignited Golden Freddy, Ignited Springtrap, the Fallen Endos, and Creation. The story of Story Mode specifically centers around Scott Cawthon and his family being attacked in their own home by the Ignited and Fallen Animatronics, who were essentially led in by the Stoppelganger demon from Hell named Michael, in an effort to take over Scott's body so he can live out as a human in the real world. There's a total of five memories you need to survive, which are basically levels. The bedroom, living room, the office, the basement, and the attic. It's a pretty messed up story, but that's part of the reason why at least story mode was successful. The other reasons for these fan games getting popular was essentially because it popularized Free Roam FNAF fan games, which at the time were considered revolutionary for FNAF. I heavily recommend these fan games, they're honestly very good. Pop goes. Pop Goes is a series of FNAF fan games created by a team of people, the director being Kane Carter. There have been a bunch of released and cancelled games associated with this series, and not to mention Pop Goes Evergreen associated with yet again the Fazbear Fanverse initiative. The Pop Goes series has been praised to death for the interesting story, original and unique mechanics in the 2016 version's gameplay, the amount of effort put into the games from the team who made them, and the overall noticeably grander scale of this series in comparison to other fan games of its time that was just enough to make it stand out among them. This series follows Pop Goes the Weasel, Blake the Badger, Sarah and Saffron the Squirrel Sisters, Stone the Crow, Black Rabbit, Simon, Gemstone, Gravestone, the Lux Animatronics, even the Freddy Fazbear's Pizza Gang, and just a lot of characters. The 2016 version of this game follows the protagonist Strings, who is an AI bot created by the game's phone guy Fritz Glade, testing as a night guard position at Pop Goes Pizzeria. Slowly and gradually into the game, you figure out the truth to a lot about this game's core, especially Fritz's memory, which is a bit fuzzy because, fun fact, Fritz is actually Jeremy Fitzgerald from FNAF 2, and his fuzzy memory is a result of the Bite of 87 since he was the victim. Oddly enough, the bite culprit in this fan game's timeline is Toy Bonnie as opposed to Mangle. There's just a lot to this game. While personally, I don't think it's perfect in the gameplay department, hence probably why Evergreen is going to be a thing, this story is honestly interesting and unique enough to make up for it. I heavily recommend these games, even the arcade games. Pop Goes Arcade 2020 is honestly one of the best FNAF fan games out there that doesn't have the usual Survive Five Nights format, and instead takes a different approach to fan games. FNAF Plus FNAF Plus is an upcoming reimagining of the first Five Nights at Freddy's game being developed by Fistnum, which is a part of the Fazbear Fanverse initiative, which means that it's being funded by Scott. Now Fistnum, because of his controversy with how he approached Security Breach and left the community, which we'll get to later in the iceberg, has been developing FNAF Plus more and more, and has been using his bad experience with Security Breach to make FNAF Plus better in his point of view. There's also been analog horror videos that Fistnum has made for FNAF Plus, some of them even having secret URLs to find. My personal favorite one of these is the breaking and entering one. Phil has also tweeted development showcases which blew people away because it was the first time it showed actual gameplay of the game. The designs for FNAF Plus have also been criticized a bit for their intentionally creepy looks, which I sort of disagree with if I have to be honest, but overall, FNAF Plus is an upcoming production from Phil because of the aftermath of one of his other projects, which we'll talk about later. One Night at Flumpties One Night at Flumpties is a trilogy of FNAF fan games created by Jonochrome associated with the Fazbear Fanverse Initiative. These three fan games are heavily remarked as three of the best FNAF fan games because of the parody angle that is taken with these, whether it's the cartoony nature of all of it, the comedy that's present in the game, as well as the engaging gameplay. Now, the reputation of these games have been ruined because of the developer, but we'll get to that later. One Night of Flumpty stars Flumpty Bumpty, who's an egg that is immune to the plot and can transcend time and space, who may go after you. As well as him, there's Birthday Boy Blam, Grunkfist the Clown, the Beaver, the Owl, the Red Man, Eyesore, and Golden Flumpty. This unique cast of characters was enough to make the Flumpty series stand out from other fan games of its time, and the third game ends off as a finale for the trilogy. And before the reputation got ruined, this was well received for the end. Day Shift at Freddy's Day Shift at Freddy's is a fan game trilogy created by Direct Doggo. 
You're playing as an orange man called Jack Kennedy or... Old Sport. And pretty much these fan games change the concept of FNAF taking place during the night shift and instead have it take place during the day. And a huge aspect of these fan games that made them get popular was the bad shit insanity and craziness going on that's off the wall. There's also twist after twist in the game's gameplay, like the choice to join Nafton, or in this series, Dave's, plan to murder the children. And that's just a lot of choices you can make that can get you multiple endings. This game series has also been heavily praised for its well-told storytelling and some of its beautiful endings. These fan games are personally my favorite FNAF fan games of all time, and it's for basically the same reasons that this trilogy has been praised for already. And furthermore, these fan games have spawned a lot of memes in the community, like Old Sport, You Have the Fox, Pick Up the Facts, Grand Canyon, etc. There's a lot of these three fan games that make them great in the eyes of the community. Jolly slash Jollibees. The Jolly and Jollibees games were fan games created by Ivan G. There are three Jolly games, with the third game having two chapters, with there being an upcoming Jolly 4, and there are two Jolly Bees games called Jolly Bees Phase 1 and Jolly Bees Phase 2, respectively. These FNAF fan games are based off of the real life Jolly Bees restaurants from the Philippines. These fan games were well received for their graphics, gameplay, and even lore. And Jolly was actually considered for the Fazbear Fanverse initiative, but that has a whole story to it which I'll get to later. Unfortunately, the two Jollibees games were requested to be taken down by the real-life Jollibees, which I'll get to later on the iceberg, but even though those two games are gone, the other Jolly games are still up and can be played and enjoyed to this day. Five Nights in Anime Five Nights in Anime is a soon-to-be trilogy of FNAF fan games which remake the original FNAF games, but in an anime style and... They have... BOOM! <laughs> These fan games are criticized heavily in the community for sexualizing the FNAF characters for very obvious reasons. The main problem with this game sexualizing the FNAF characters according to people is the fact that the FNAF characters are haunted by children. The developer of these games, Marisu, has gone on record to say that children don't exist in this game's universe. However, it doesn't stop the games from being very fucking weird. Final Nights the Final Night series is a quad trilogy of FNAF fan games created by Jelly Liam. Each game focuses around certain points in Freddy's history. For example, Final Nights 3 is about the bite of 87 victim in the hospital, Final Nights 4 switches between 1973 as a Fredbear, security guard, and the modern day as a paranormal investigator. These were fan games praised for their unique and interesting gameplay at the time. It was seen as like the joy of creation, both in terms of visuals and gameplay. These fan games were received so well that Jelly Liam would later even be given the opportunity to be a part of the Fazbear Fanverse initiative with an original fan game. Just goes to show. Five Nights at Treasure Island Five Nights at Treasure Island is said to be the first popular FNAF fan game, and for that title, it's pretty unique for how it functions as a game. It has all the landmarks that FNAF fan games today would be praised for among the community, all from gameplay and visual perspectives. This game is based off of the abandoned by Disney creepypasta with photo negative Mickey as the main star. It was the fan game that made way for a lot of FNAF fan games to come, and this fan game eventually got finished as a remake by Radiance in 2020, which the original developer actually assisted with. This fan game is indeed a classic, and even though the original version never got finished, and the original version is kind of poorly aged now, at least we got the remake. Five Nights at Fuckboys The Five Nights at Fuckboys trilogy is another set of classic FNAF fan games from the early days. It got a redone complete collection version in 2021, but back in the day, these fan games stood out for being very comedic in a meme edgy way. The dialogue and writing present in these games were so well done, and just like they showed at Freddy's, there is a lot of iconic lines in the community stem from this game like Inhale My Dawn Arrangement Child. This paved the way for a lot of comedic FNAF fan games to follow, and it can never be ignored. These fan games, as much as they are jokes, did play a significant role in the finding stones of FNAF fan games. Classic Fan Game Remakes Basically, the Radiance team would sometimes themselves full-on create, or assist others in creating remakes to popular fan games from the 2014 to 2015 era of fan games. The most popular example being the 2020 remake to Finance of Treasure Island. Other examples being Finance of Thomas's Dehydrated, which is of course a 2021 remake of Finance of Thomas's, and currently in production is Finance of Thomas's 2 Derailed, a remake of Finance of Thomas's 2, as well as Finance of Chuck E. Cheese's Rebooted, a 2021 remake of Finance of Chuck E. Cheese. 
These fan games have gotten a lot of praise from the community for how well they remake these old classics and even improve upon them to make them better than before. Whether it's changing some mechanics, changing a lot of the graphics to be in a modern state, or just generally polishing up these games. Another aspect about these games that are often praised about is the fact that the Radiance team, often or not, actually get the original creators of these fan games involved with the remakes productions. That's actually really cool. A lot of these fan games are well done at the end of the day, and I truly recommend them. Cancelled fan games. This is probably just referring to the fact that FNAF fan games that were in development pretty often got cancelled by their developers. Whether the reasons be motivational loss, loss for the game files, being too busy in personal life, etc. There's many fan games out there that have been cancelled. That includes popular ones. Some examples include Pop Goes 2, Project Box, One Week of Flumpties, Sinister Turmoil, The Return of Freddy's 5, and much more. It's also noticeable how for a lot of fan games before they get cancelled, they're either heavily delayed or in development hell. It's strange. John Crim's Cancellation So this entry is about how on November 8th, 2021, the developer of One Eight of Flumpties, John Crim, was outed as a child groomer that dated a 14-year-old girl at the age of 20. Basically, the victim in this situation came forward on Twitter about what Jono did, but the only pieces of evidence provided were screenshots that looked somewhat fake. The initial response from the community was that these allegations were lies. However, unfortunately, Jono Krum made a statement and confessed that this was true, and the victim made a response afterwards to basically leave her and Jono alone. This disappointed a lot of people because of how great the 1-8 of Flumpty series was and how a lot of people played the first two games back in the day in a nostalgic way. John Ocrum officially left the community, and ever since his cancellation for being a pedophile, he has never made a statement or anything. He just disappeared. This has also caused certain things like the egg collection getting cancelled, Flumpty's merch getting cancelled, and overall the reputation of the Fazbear Fanverse initiative started to sink. John Ocrum's cancellation has done significant damage in the community, completely ruining the victim forever, ruining the reputation of one of Flumpty's and the Fazbear Fanverse initiative, and even John Ocrum himself. I can only assume it is this high on the iceberg because of how big the backlash and controversy was in this community. Fisnum's Controversies so Fisnum, the developer working on FNAF Plus as a part of the Fazbear Fanverse initiative, has been in several controversies with the FNAF community. Some examples being how he harshly criticized Jelly Liam's Final Night series, how he has harshly responded to certain YouTubers like Daco, accusations of him being ableist and anti-autism despite the fact that he has worked with many non-divergent people in the past and even currently, and there is by far Fisnum's biggest controversy with the community, which was how he responded to Security Breach the latest entry in the official Finance of Freddy's franchise. He essentially hated it, and he made a statement regarding that and how even though he was still going to work on FNAF Plus, he'd be leaving the FNAF community. This made people question whether or not to support FNAF Plus, because FNAF Plus was now a FNAF fan game being made by someone who isn't a fan of FNAF. This controversy has also led people to believe that Fisnum was actually the reason for Security Breach turning out to be bad, as people have said because of how Fisnum would tweet hashtag ShowFNAFSB before the game's release in an effort to rush Steel Wool, which some said because of Phil's influence, it worked, which made more people pissed at Phil. This is a very touchy subject because of the divides and rumors in this community, and have made a lot of people angry on both sides. It's unfortunate. Five Nights at Wario's Five Nights at Wario's is a FNAF fan game series developed by WW Wario. This game basically takes Nintendo characters and adds a FNAF spin to them. There are currently six games in this series, plus five remastered versions for the first five games. Five Nights at Wario's 1-4, Five Nights at Wario's Origins, and Five Shows at Wario's. These fan games also have a lot of lore within this series, which has been explained in a video on the developer's channel. Now, these fan games have been criticized for the photoshopped images for graphics and for the reuse of the original FNAF series' as gameplay with the first Wario's game, but the thing is, these games are gameplay over graphics, and that's what the developers intended the series to be. These fan games don't really deserve the flack they get in my opinion. One Week at Flumpties 
One Week at Flumpty's was a cancelled third game in the One Night at Flumpty series by Jonochrome. This fan game is supposed to be in one night, was going to be five nights that would offer more unique mechanics from the previous two games. The game would sadly end up getting cancelled with only most of the graphics and Birthday Boy Blam's gameplay being coded. There was going to be the twist in Night 6 that the protagonist of One Week at Flumpty's was going to be Flumpty Bumpty himself. Some of the game's mechanics would later be reused for One Night at Flumpty's 3 in 2021, and there has been fan-made versions of this cancelled game made. The biggest one that comes to mind is the one being developed by Sipley Mackison. This game ultimately never saw the light of day though, and it's forever a prime example of a cancelled FNAF fan game. Five Nights with 39 Finance with 39 is a parody FNAF fan game created by 39 Games. Loosely a canon sequel to the first Five Nights Before Freddy's game, 39 tells Sam Clydeson, the father of Clyde, the protagonist of Five Nights Before Freddy's one, that he killed Clyde, and so Sam comes to the Fazbear Advert Studio to confront him. Now the main reason for this game getting so popular was because of the game's comedy. This game focuses around the animatronic 39 the Bunny, who swears, makes fun of the original FNAF games, and even masturbates as shown in the Night 6 cutscene even. This fan game was played by big content creators like Markiplier and Eth Goes Boom, and this game got so much eyes that it got an anniversary remake, an RPG called Five Ventures with 39, an upcoming game called Finds with 39 Impurity, and not to mention Five Nights with 39 too, which is still in development. The rest of the story of 39 is that after Sam goes to confront 39, Sam, as well as the player, figure out that 39 didn't actually kill Sam's son, and he only said he did to get Sam to come to the advert studio because he's lonely and wants friends since he killed them, those friends being Bluebeard, Takesha, and David respectively. But when a new accurate model of him is brought into the advert studio, this new accurate model chokes Sam Clydeson, which the 39 we know puts him out of his misery. But then, the new accurate 39 takes 39's only friend left, Plushy, which leaves 39 in the streets. 39 decides to go on a massive LSD drug trip, which the events of Five Ventures with 39 happens, and after encouragement from a shadowy version of himself, 39 decides to go out on a mission to save Plushy from accurate 39, which paves the way for impurity and finance with 39 too. The story of this game is very often overlooked by people because of the game's main focus on the comedy, and it's a shame because personally, the story of this game is honestly very good for a FNAF fan game, and I wish it got more appreciation. Five Nights at Sonic's the Finance at Sonic series is a FNAF fan game series first started in 2015 by the Cyvap and later continued by Smiler Fursifer. There's a total of six games and one spin off game in this series. These games are basically the original FNAF games, but instead with Sonic and Mario characters. Now, these fan games over the years have been criticized and hated on for multiple reasons, whether that be the drawn graphics, the reuse of gameplay for the original FNAF games, or even the interpersonal drama and conflicts within the fan game series' little sub-community, and even its developers themselves sometimes. Regardless, the original Fight of Sonic's games are old classics of the FNAF fan game world, and that cannot be ignored. These games deserve more appreciation for simply being one of the OGs. Another FNAF fan game open source. Another FNAF fan game open source is a remake of FNAF 2 created by Fistnum, developer of FNAF Plus. This remake basically improved on FNAF 2 in a lot of ways, visually and gameplay wise. Because of this, Scott Cawthon had to remove it from Game Jolt because of how identical it was to FNAF 2, and even more, the fact it was a better and improved version. Phil was naturally upset, and he cancelled the full version of the game. However, Phil and Scott came up with a compromise, and that compromise ended up becoming FNAF Plus, a reimagining of FNAF 1 that was associated with Scott's, at the time not yet announced, Fazbear Fanverse initiative. So thanks to this cancelled and deleted game, we wouldn't have FNAF Plus. It's very insane. Baby's Nightmare Circus Baby's Nightmare Circus is a FNAF fan game created by Mixlass. This fan game basically takes the Funtime animatronics from Sister Location and turns them into Nightmare animatronics. There's a lot to this game like collecting collectibles and also having many levels. Furthermore, there's even a classic mode to this game which has more enemies and a lot more variety in the gameplay. I definitely recommend this fan game, especially for the classic mode. There's also a Baby's Nightmare Circus Bike Fighter game where you fight enemies while playing as Nightmare Baby riding her bike while the fan game is kind of fun too on its own right. Simulator Games 
FNAF simulator games are basically games where instead of being attacked by the animatronics, you are the animatronic. There's a lot of FNAF simulator games. These types of fan games are first popularized with 2015's Bonnie Simulator by Egros, which lets you play as Bonnie and Springtrap, and the sequel allows you to play as Toy Bonnie and Wither Bonnie. There's also Chica Simulator, which allows you to play as any Chica from FNAF 1 to Ultimate Custom Night. When playing these simulator games, you can earn points to buy certain advantages and other things. Just, there's a lot of FNAF simulator games out there, even simulator games based off of existing fan games like Candies 2. These simulator games are an interesting approach to the FNAF fan game formula. Afton Built so Afton Built was this FNAF fan game that was being created by Jelly Liam, the developer of the Final Night series, and this fan game initially was going to be a part of the Fazbear Fanverse initiative. This game focuses around you helping Afton collecting scrapped animatronic parts for his plan. This game had an alpha build released and was stated that it was never going to be finished. This game was ultimately rejected by Scott from the Fazbear Fanverse initiative for being too ambitious. One of the team members would post an AFQ devlog on GameJoll answering common questions about the state of the game. Then Jelly Liam was approached by fellow content creator Fefkane for an interview which Liam took the opportunity without letting know the Afton built dev team. Unfortunately this interview led to Jelly Liam breaking one of the NDAs he had to sign for Scott which caused a lot of stir in the community. The interview painted Scott Cawthon as a person who didn't immediately respond to his clients, adding onto people's list of reasons why Scott Cawthon deserved to be cancelled. This controversy is a whole can of worms to unravel. It's just a shame though that Afton Bill will never be finished. Finites with Mac Tonight The Finites with Mac Tonight series is a fan game series developed by Malrat aka Photo Negative Mickey, which consists of 8 games Mac Tonight 1, Mac Tonight 2, Mac Tonight 1 Halloween Update, Mac Tonight 1 Remastered, Mac Tonight 3, Mac Tonight 2 Remastered, Mac Tonight Halloween Special, and Mac Tonight 2 Year Anniversary Version. These fan games center around the McDonald's 80s mascot, Mac Tonight, who performed little jazz songs and commercials to advertise McDonald's being open for 24 hours. In these games, it's not just Mac Tonight you have to worry about, just a lot of McDonald's characters from back in the day, you know? The series' main antagonist is Chris, who's trying to get revenge on McDonald's after his daughter dies because of the lack of food due to them being poor, and McDonald's not providing the poor employee a raise or anything to help keep his daughter alive. These fan games have their fans because of the unique gameplay in each installment and the story, and while the series is now over, it's undeniable these fan games were special to people. Super FNAF Super FNAF is basically a 16-bit platformer game developed by LSF Development focused around the animatronics themselves, and the game leads up to the night that they finally get revenge on Afton, aka the FNAF 30 Night 5 minigame. This game has been endlessly praised among the community for two reasons, the first being the impressive graphics which at the time was very unique and creative for FNAF fan games, and the game takes full advantage of the style with not just the visuals, but also the sound effects and music. The other reason for this fan game's popularity is the overall story of this game. The story is taken to a more emotional core than other FNAF fan games of its kind, and the ending of the game with Springtribe even contributing. This fan game was so good to people that it got itself an upcoming sequel in development called Super FNAF 2 Wonderful Day, which seems to focus around the fun time animatronic crew. This fan game will always be a classic in the fan game world, and it's very obvious why. Sinister Turmoil Sinister Turmoil is a cancelled free run FNAF fan game originally being developed by UHQ Games, and later being developed by Angus Games. Now this game was going to focus around the Sinister animatronics, as well as prototype and circus animatronics. There have been multiple versions of this game in development, but ultimately, the whole project got cancelled. However, a short version of what the game was going to be like was released called Sinister Turmoil Sewers, which focused around you surviving in the sewers from Prototype Mangle. This cancelled fan game was said by the community to offer something new to the free roam fan game formula, which was why the cancellation of the base game came as a disappointment to some. LEGO FNAF LEGO FNAF is pretty much a fan-made creation of the first Finance of Freddy's game, but in LEGOs. It was created by Rollo20, and basically this contains the first six nights of FNAF 1 and a custom night with challenges. You can collect stud Legos throughout the game, whether it's beating knights or even honking Freddy's nose each time you're playing a night, and with these collected stud Legos, which you can actually lose if you lose all three lives in the game, you can buy stuff from the shop which consists of trophies, skins, easter eggs like Sparky, and even tools and plushies that can actually help you in-game. 
This fan game was instantly praised by the community for turning everything from the first game and making it into Lego sets that you would build in real life. It captures the feeling really well, like you built the entire map of FNAF 1 from Legos, and the cameras look like you took pictures of the sets. Even with this very well done remake from Legos, you actually need to own FNAF 1 on Steam before you can actually play, which the purpose is to avoid legal conflicts of piracy. They're also making a FNAF 2 Lego version as well, which I'm personally excited to play. Five Nights Before Fridays Five Nights Before Fridays is a duology of FNAF fan games created by 39 games. The first Five Nights Before Freddy's game even be a precursor to the Five Nights of 39. The first game revolves around Freddy Fazbear's Pizza reopening its doors, and you need to spend the next five nights at the Fazbear Advert Studio watching over and maintaining the animatronics before they get shipped to Freddy's for the grand reopening. And Five Nights Before Freddy's 2 revolves around a shipping truck destined to the new Freddy's establishment crashing and the animatronics being stolen, which then, they start roaming the forest. The protagonist and his compadre on the walkie-talkie, who serves as the game's phone guy, is being blackmailed to go to the cabin each night to watch over the animatronics, which all comes to a head at the end of the game. Now, these two games are known in the community as being associated with Finance of 39. Hell, the first game literally uses almost the exact same location, and the phone guy in the game has a similar voice to 39, even though it's the same voice actor of 39 games. It's a shame because personally, these two games have better gameplay than 39, and the story is still something underappreciated with these two games. Grizzlies So Grizzlies is a FNAF fan game created by Lester Tellas, which is a remake of the 2019 fan game Devious Minds. This fan game is basically known for being the first political FNAF fan game, the political aspect coming from the game's lore. This game was first popularized through Fistum streaming the game on his YouTube channel, and ever since then, this fan game has become an ironic joke among the community. The fan game even has its own catchphrase, which is literally, it takes guts. This game is also a meme for being a game where you actually don't need the cameras to beat the game. This fan game is honestly something to behold for its wholly ironic meme material. Those Nights of Fredbears Those Nights of Fredbears was going to be a free roam Fredbear survival game created by the Joy of Creation and Those Nights of Rachel's developer Nixon. The game would take place at Fredbear's Family Diner, and presumably, it was a usual free roam game. This game has unfortunately been cancelled as of 2017 due to corruption loss of the files, and even with this, people have tried making their own versions of Those Nights of Fredbears. However, on the Joy Creation Stream Mode Anniversary Q&A video, there was a teaser at the end for a remake of a certain game. Tyler Olstrom Tyler Olstrom, or BFP Films, is known as the main developer behind the Return of the Freddy series. This dude is extremely controversial, and that's because this dude is very scummy. To start off, he makes very weird and questionable choices when it comes to developing his games. There's also a lot of weird shit from him associated with his game development that's just odd. As a person, he's also a shithead. He would lie about his girlfriend being his sister. He would attempt outrageous shit like trying to work at companies like PlayStation. And not to mention, how he faked suicide at one point for Return to Freddy's 4. This dude is just so stupid it actually hurts my soul. Tyler Olstrom is a name in the FNAF fangame community that whenever he's brought up, he's bad news. Ripoff Mobile Games This is probably referring to the abundance of ripoff FNAF games on app downloading platforms like the Google Play Store. A lot of these games are poorly made from a quality point of view, often have in-app purchases which the prices can be ridiculous, and even one of these ripoff games having certain terrible content in it which we'll unfortunately get to later in the iceberg. Andre Ports This is probably just referring to how there's a lot of Andre ports for FNAF fan games, both official and unofficial. Some fan game developers have made official Andre ports for their fan games, for free of course, and would put them with the PC version on the game troll page. There's also a lot of people who would port the fan games and make unofficial Android ports of the fan games, regardless if the developer would care or not. But most of the time, the original developer of the fan game wouldn't really care as long credit was given and was put out for free. One Night with a Box The One Night with a Box series is the series first created by Bubby and then taken over by Remedus. 
The games are basically one, but sometimes some extra nights, even including a custom night, and 90% of the characters are boxes. Literally boxes. The whole series is a meme too. There's memes everywhere. It's the most meme-filled FNAF fan game, and yet, the gameplay is still enticing for a lot of the games. I personally think Gay Location was the series' best game for its meme usage and its gameplay, which the series does a good job balancing. Despite the memes, it's a good FNAF fan game series in all honesty. Endless Inside Endless Inside is a FNAF fan game which was made infamous because of the fact that it was somehow greenlit onto Steam and costed actual money to get the game, despite it being a fan game. No permission from Scott, the Fazbear Fanverse initiative didn't exist yet, there was no reason for a FNAF fan game that honestly really does look like a sister location fan game to be on Steam. Hell, apparently even the developer denies it's a sister location fan game. I'm sorry, but it is, and it shouldn't be on Steam. And to this very day, it hasn't been removed. It's still on Steam for $8, which is more than FNAF 1. Regardless if you like the game itself or not, it's factually a sister location fan game that should be free on games all like the others. Pyro Illusion Pyro Illusion is an upcoming FNAF fan game by Dimeco. This game is usually on a lot of people's excitement list because of how impressive the graphics look. However, this fan game has been in development for a while, and it still hasn't been released. Not a lot is known about what the gameplay and story is, which does worry some people because they assume the game will be graphics over gameplay. I hope not, because this fan game has potential. Jollibee's Removal So Jollibee's, as you already know, is the other technically fan game series by IVNG. Unlike Jolly, which just used the real life restaurant of Jollibee's as an inspiration and a base, this fan game is actually about the real life establishment. And when both Phase 1 and Phase 2 came out, they were pretty popular among the community, popular enough to where YouTubers with high sub and view counts would play them on their channels. Unfortunately, this popularity of the Jollibee's games would end up getting these games in trouble with the real-life Jollibee's establishment. What happened was the real-life Jollibee's chain contacted Ivan and basically told him to remove Jollibee's Phase 1 and Phase 2 off of Game Jolt or else they would sue. The reason why the real-life Jollibee's establishment wanted Ivan to remove these two games was the possible risk of ruining the establishment's reputation. While the Jollibee's games were pretty well received for good reasons, it was fair enough for the establishment to issue this to Ivan. A business has got to protect their brand's image. It's business stuff. Scratch Fan Games this is basically referring to how there's a lot of FNAF fan games that are created on the beginner's website, Scratch. Basically, a lot of people that are wanting to learn how to develop a fan game or a game in general will go to make their first fan games on this website. A lot of these fan games are looked down upon in the community, but I think it's important to know that Scratch is a learner tool and you need to understand that a lot of FNAF fan games on Scratch are literally just beginners trying to learn game development. Fan Games at Freddy's Showcases the fan games at Freddy's showcases are a live stream showcase of trailers for upcoming FNAF fan games in the community. These streams started in 2020 and are hosted on the fan games at Freddy's YouTube channel. One of the best parts about these is that this is not a popularity requirement deal. I'm pretty sure you can actually get your fan game, if it looks competent, to be placed into one of these events. Which if that's the case, that's awesome for fan game developers that want to get recognition from their passion and work. Plus, whenever one of these streams occurs, it's a whole community event that even FNAF YouTubers like Daku himself show up to appear in the live chat. It's always a great time with these. Fan Games at Freddits Fan Games at Freddits is a game jam event hosted by Fistum and Busick, one of the moderators from Freddit, aka the FNAF subreddit. During these events, you are given a theme, and by a certain time, you must make a FNAF fan game that relates to the theme. They first started these in 2019, then in 2020, then it was absent for 2021, but they're back at it for 2022. For 2019, the winner was FNAF Pocket Horror by Nam Elbrup, and for 2020, the winner was Five Nights at Fuckboy's Fazbear Heist GT by Studio Space Carpet. These are always a great time for the community because of how it brings fan game developers together to make all new fan games, and you have everyone else who plays them and judge them. It's pretty nice. Case Animatronics Misconception This is likely about the very common misconception that the Case Animatronics games created by Ellison and Last Level are FNAF fan games or FNAF related projects. 
This misconception basically comes from the fact that these two games are centered around surviving against terrifying animatronics as antagonists. I hate to break it to you, but they aren't FNAF fan games or FNAF related. Scott Cawthon doesn't legally own the usage of animatronics, especially for horror. He just popularized the concept. Case Animatronics is an original duology that, for sure, may have had FNAF as an inspiration, but it isn't a full-on FNAF-related project. Five Nights at Rock Bottom Five Nights at Rock Bottom was meant to serve as the third game in the Five Nights at the Krusty Krab slash Chum Bucket series. The game was originally going to take place in Rock Bottom, and there was going to be a whole twist about Hammerhead at the end in regards to the first two games. This game would end up getting cancelled because the developer initially created it for the fans and the fans possibly not liking the game. It was cancelled for a while. Until the developer tried again and created Five Nights at the Krusty Krab Chapter 3, which has a bit of altered story and location and more. The developer decided to make the game after all because of FNAF's new sound popularity again due to security breach. The ending in this new game had a mixed response from the general community because of how it took place on the surface the whole time, but the game was still received well for its gameplay. Trump Location Trump Location was initially just a parody trailer of the Sister Location trailer. The trailer basically swapped out the Funtime animatronics with a Trump animatronic and animatronic depictions of politicians around 2016. The original trailer was made by Wibbly Wobbly. Sometime after, Wibbly decided to make Trump Location an actual FNAF fan game, a game till page was created and game development started. A second trailer from Trump Location came out in honor of the 2020 presidential election. The game is currently still not released, but I'm pretty sure it's still being developed. The sad part is, despite the fan game literally focusing on a former president directly, it would not be the first political FNAF fan game. Grizzlies would take that role unfortunately. Still though, it'll probably be hilarious when it releases. Ignited Animatronics and Security Breach Now this one is actually kind of cool. So in Security Breach, when you go into the Fazcade, there's two certain cabinets. One of them literally has Ignited Freddy on it, and the other arcade cabinet has Ignited Freddy yet again, as well as Ignited Bonnie. The arcade cabinets being House of the Bear and House of the Bear 2 respectively. This is a nice detail and just shows how far the fan game industry has come that there's references in the official games. Jolly rejected from Fazbear Fanverse. So this one is sort of hilarious. Basically what happened was when Scott Cawthon was reaching out to the current Fazbear Fanverse initiative developers to be included in the Fanverse, Scott actually contacted Ivan G, the creator of the Jolly series. Scott wanted to include Jolly as a part of the Fazbear Fanverse initiative, and while not confirmed, it's highly likely Scott also wanted Ivan to make a Jolly 4 to simply accommodate with how the other Fanverse developers involved were making new fan games for this initiative. Before Ivan even responded to Scott, he posted an image on Twitter of Withered Jolly from Jolly 3 Chapter 1 with a PlayStation controller which was serving as an ambiguous teaser to the Fazbear Fanverse initiative's existence and the fact that Jolly got included in the Fanverse. Obviously what was in the image was a nod to how the Fazbear Fanverse initiative games were possibly going to get console ports made of them. However, Jolly would soon be pulled from the fanverse. The main reason of which was that when Scott approached Ivan for this, Scott didn't realize that the characters and setting of Jolly were directly based off of Jollibees, which as you know already because of an earlier entry on this iceberg or possibly even before you saw this video, it's a real establishment from the Philippines and its characters are indeed copyrighted. Scott would later realize this thankfully because of other fanverse developers letting him know about the copyright, as well as the teaser, and that ultimately would lead to Ivan and Jolly's removal from the fanverse. Just looking back at this is just so funny in a very stupid way, and clearly I'm not the only one because believe it or not, FNAF Plus developer Fistnum made a parody image of this silly teaser by replacing Withered Jolly with Ronald McDonald, another copyrighted character from another food establishment. Just all around, a really funny but stupid story about the behind the scenes prior to the announcement of the Fazbear Fanverse initiative. Pop goes and candies are canon with each other. Kane and the Mill have confirmed on multiple occasions that Pop goes and Financy Candies take place in the same universe. 
They both take place in a universe where only the first three FNAF games happened. And in the office for the cancelled Pop Goes finale, there would be that taste soda from Finds the Candies 2. Even though they're in the same universe, it's unlikely Candies and Pop Goes are going to interact in a huge way as said by Kane on Twitter, but we can only dream that these two iconic FNAF fanging characters met or crossed paths somehow, some way. Pop Goes Spring Bonnie and Help Wanted Teaser Okay, this is funny. So in ScottGames.com when Help Wanted was in development, there were teasers for the game, and one of the teasers basically had the animatronics in a blue coloring. Except some of the animatronic models in the teaser weren't actually steelwools and were taken from the internet, and one of them being the Spring Bonnie model from Pop Goes. Kane has even commented on this when it first started being spread around, and he thought it was pretty funny. The teaser would later be changed, of course, when Scott and Steelwool took notice of the mistake they made. Cancellation Attempts Against Nixon and Kane Carter Sorry if I sound miserable during this entry, it's just that I know exactly what this entry is referring to, and both of these situations were extremely stupid when they were happening, so bear with me. This entry is basically referring to how there's been attempts in the past to cancel Nixon and Kane Carter. People attempted to cancel Nixon because of how back in the day, he was actually transphobic. And then when the Fazbear Fanverse initiative was announced, people were more encouraged to cancel Nixon, but it turns out, even around two years when the initiative was announced, Nixon stopped being transphobic and became much more accepting. That's good on Nixon's part, and that also made this whole cancellation attempt so fucking dumb. And for Kane, unlike Nixon, where the accusations made against him were true at one point, these accusations were always false, and these were that Kane was a racist. These accusations were made because it was misinterpreted that when Kane said he thought it was rather ridiculous to discredit American history because of the racist people in the history and how not all Americans are racist, and yeah, of course, the screenshots you're seeing were posted and spread around out of context, and you get it. I assume these two situations were grouped together on the iceberg because these were both cancellation attempts made around the time the Fazbear Fanverse initiative was publicly announced, with the accusers thinking their newfound attention from Scott's announcement was undeserved. This is a whole heap of shit. Nixon changed and King Carter was never racist. One of his replies on Twitter just got misinterpreted. That's the long and short of it. Game Jolt Shutdown this is simply referring to how when big FNAF fan games were released, it would shut down the Game Jolt servers because of the amount of people going to download the game. It happened with Candies 2 and 3, and the Joy of Creation story mode. Hell, when Flumpty's 3 released, Game Jolt was actually cutting close to shutting down, but it didn't fully. Hell, if you want to know something else, this is not exclusive to FNAF fan games. This has actually happened when Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator and Ultimate Custom Night were uploaded to Game Jolt. It's always a fan game milestone whenever Game Jolt breaks on the release day of a big fan game. Dormant Abyss's story. Oh boy, this is gonna be a sensitive one. If you do not want to hear about this, please mute the video until the next iceberg entry comes on. I'll not show any visuals. If you continue on as normal and you still get uncomfortable, I warned you. So basically, the story of Dormitibus centers around John Wright, who's dead and is in purgatory surviving against a whole bunch of animatronics. That baseline part of the story, you know, that's fine. It's the surrounding backstory of this game that makes this game, and especially its lore, so controversial that it even has a spot on this iceberg to its own. And it's all about this game's version of William Afton, who in this game's universe is called Garvey Wright. By the way, the main reason for this name change is similar to how Candies and Popkas only takes FNAF 1 to 3 into account, Dormitibus only takes FNAF 1 through 4 into account, and in the first four FNAF games, we don't know that Afton's name is William Afton, so that name during this point in time is mysterious and left up to the creator's interpretation. Basically in short, while Garvey Wright is still a murderer like in the FNAF games, Garvey is also a child rapist. Garvey, in this game's canon, literally rapes Susie, the girl who becomes Chica. It's not even implied. It's literally stated throughout tapes and newspapers, and it was almost shown in the cardboard theater minigame where Garvey is dragging Susie during one of the parts of it. It's fucked, and not in a good way. And when you consider the developer of this game and what he did in his personal life, it's very clear why this child rape element is in this game's story. However, we will talk about the lead developer of this game far down the iceberg. Let's move on. Walton Files Fangame 
This entry is likely referring to the fact that the popular Walton Files series on YouTube by Martine Walls was actually going to be a FNAF fan game before it became analog horror, if it wasn't already evident with Bond looking like Toy Bonnie. The fan game in question was called Welcome to Bond's Burgers. The team would tire themselves out to desperately finish the game, take multiple breaks throughout 2019, and then the game would eventually be cancelled in 2020, and the game tool page for the game would be removed and Martine would go on to fret it in regards to why it was cancelled. And then afterwards, on April 26, 2020, the first episode of the Walton Files company introductory tape would be released. This has always been an interesting case of a cancelled fan game turning into something much more interesting. Unofficial Candies Merch Yep, they exist, and they look awful. Really awful. And it's bootleg merch, so it's to be expected. Since the Fazbear Fanverse Initiative is going to most likely have merch made of finance and candies, this trash is going to be forgotten, but its bootleg quality is just unmatched compared to FNAF bootleg merch. Running in the 80s Running in the 80s was a FNAF fan game about the protagonist traveling to an old Fazbear entertainment location from the 80s and modern times, and the game itself was pretty interesting with its unique gameplay mechanics and its impressive visuals. But if you're aware, you know why it's on the iceberg. Basically, this fan game was actually taken down by the creator because it was reported and found to have a Trojan inside of it, which is not good because of viruses. This fan game, when it came out, got a decent amount of buzz in the community, and for the standout fan game of the month among the community, for this to happen was just really suspicious and really odd. This caused a lot of stir, and people went crazy because of how they had the game downloaded and they would possibly have a virus. It was not a good look for the developer of the game. However, there's an official remaster of the game being made under a new name, the name being The Cog Forever Spinning, but the original version is officially now a relic of fan game history. Porkchop's Horror Show Porkchop's Horror Show is another fan game being created by Fistnum. Now, this fan game was originally cancelled. However, this game got uncancelled so Fistnum could prove a point to King Carter. As of now, this fan game is kind of being sidelined because of FNAF Plus. Hell, there's even rumors that this game's actually going to be turned into an original game considering Fistnum's leave from the FNAF community. I hope this game does come out, fan game or original, because it genuinely looks really cool. Kellen Goff and Dash of the Freddy's 2 Basically, the voice actor of Funtime Freddy, Molten Freddy, Fred Bear Glamrock Freddy, and the daycare attendant from the FNAF franchise, Kellen Goff, basically agreed to voice a character for a certain ending in Day Shift at Freddy's 2 by Direct Doggo. This character in question being the Golden Bear Scrotum, which the ending in question being the Golden Bear Scrotum ending, respectively. Peter tries to get Jack to dance in the suit to entertain the children, but then the suit actually wakes up and he bites Jack. You have provoked the Golden Bear Scrotum! Leaving the ending screen on Jack in the hospital bed with a bitten head as the ending description plays, and lo and behold, there is Kellen Goff's credit. I'm assuming this is on the lower tier of the iceberg because of how much people don't know about this because of how the Golden Bear Scrotum ending is a very obscure ending in the whole Day Shift at Freddy series. It's pretty cool that Kellen will voice in the fan game and he would voice in one more. However, we'll get to that later. Five Nights of the Crusty Crab on the Steam so pretty much someone attempted to get Syncaroni's Finance of the Krusty Krab greenlit on Steam. This obviously got rejected because this was during a time where FNAF fan games or games that were obviously based on FNAF were easily to crack down by Steam and its moderators. And since this was an early FNAF fan game, that means it was likely a game that wasn't the best in quality, and Finance of the Krusty Krab was no exception. Due to this Steam greenlight incident, the fan game got attention from more people. But sadly, it was negative attention, and the game would be ridiculed as well as the developer himself, because he was thought of at the time to be the person who attempted to get it greenlit. However, it was later proven the dude in question who tried to get it greenlit was just an ordinary asshole or troll, and thankfully since then, this little incident has mostly blown over. The Calling Knights Fredbear's Lament 
The Colony Knights Freiburg's Laminate was a FNAF fan game that was solely made for fellow content creator Go Motion's April Fool's 2020 prank, where basically the fan game was an intentional parody of the stereotypical Fredbear fan games that you see everywhere in regards to FNAF fan games. And Go Motion would review this parody fan game on April 1st, 2020, in her review FNAF fan game series on her channel. Basically, in short, this stereotypical cliche fan game was made to be reviewed by Go Motion. It's honestly a very elaborate prank that took place, and the review itself is pretty good. Day Shift at Freddy's 3 originally cancelled. The third and final Day Shift at Freddy's game in the trilogy, Day Shift at Freddy's 3, was rumored to be cancelled around mid to 2018 because of how Direct Doggo had to take a leave from the internet due to health reasons, dire enough to check into the hospital for a few months. During this time, it was rumored that Doggo completely left because of the people disrespectfully begging for Day Shift at Freddy's 3, even under posts and devlogs that were serious. And the reason why the rumor of Day Shift 3 getting cancelled got spread around is because of a miswording from Doggo's part to a former friend. Thankfully, Doggo got better, and he returned to the internet fully, including continuing the development of Day Shift at Freddy's 3, which I'm glad its cancellation was just a rumor and it actually released, because this game is personally my favorite FNAF fan game of all time. Those Nights at Rachel's 2 Original so basically, before those nights at Rachel's tour reloaded, that April Fool's 2018 prank by Nixon, which was thought of and made, there was going to be an actual sequel to those nights at Rachel's. The game would center around withered versions of the characters from the first game, such as Rachel the Rabbit, Thug the Dog, Bane the Bull, Pete the Pig, Ray the Raccoon, and possibly more. This fan game, of course, got cancelled. But at least now, we got somewhat of a sequel to this game, and even though it was an April Fool's prank, this game was still fun and hilarious, and this prank game is actually considered canon by Nixon. Funny. Jollibee's Phase 3 Jollibee's Phase 3 is another example of a cancelled FNAF fan game. Originally after Jollibee's Phase 2, there was going to be a Jollibee's Phase 3 in production. However, due to the removal of the Jollibee's games as requested by the Real Life Philippines establishment, this fan game would be cancelled. It makes you wonder about the story of the previous two games and how it would continue. Scrapped Popko's Human Face This is referring to the scrapped easter egg from Popko's 2016 of this terrifying image of this human face. It's been said that this image is supposed to represent Fritz, but in a dead state. The scrapped image can still be found in the last box of the scrapped content section on the game's extra menu, which doesn't even have a name or label, it's just a black box. It's honestly very creepy and disturbing. Ugh. Five Nights with Mac Tonight 3 Original. This is similar to the case with Those Nights at Rachel's 2, basically revolving around how there was a cancelled original game that was vastly different from the final version of the game that would get released. One of the big differences between the Rachel's 2 situation and Mac Tonight 3 situation was that the final version of Mac Tonight we got was an actual FNAF fan game and not an April Fool's prank. Basically, the original Finest of Mac Tonight 3 was going to take place during a character's nightmare in Kingdom FNAF 4. The character in question was likely Chris, the series' main antagonist. And we could probably assume that the animatronics in this game were like nightmare variants. This game would end up getting cancelled because of motivational reasons. However, in 2018, he would end up releasing a Finest of Mac Tonight 3. However, it would be much different from the original. One of the biggest differences between the original and this new final version that released was not canon to the other two Mac Tonight games, whereas the original was. Another big difference was that instead of taking place during a nightmare, it took place on the McBarge or the Friendship 500, which was a real-life McDonald's restaurant that was built on a barge. Sadly, the real-life version is currently no longer in use and is anchored. It's very interesting how this Mac Tonight 3 we got was much different from its original concept. Candy's 4 teaser in a Mel stream. On February 8th, 2019, Amel Mako was live on YouTube playing FNAF fan games that were submitted to the Fan Games of Reddit Season 1 Game Jam. At the end of the stream, at around the 52127 mark, Amel briefly showed a small teaser for Fighting to Candies 4. It was clear that it was Candies 4 because it had a green color pattern to it, which was perceived to be the game's color pattern since the first teaser of the game, the teaser being a look at one of the locations in the game. It's been speculated that this location is possibly the office, but considering how much this game is going to be derived from sister location, this is likely to be any room in the building. Five Nights with 39 Impurity 
Finance with 39 Impurity is a fan game created by 39 Games. Obviously, the developer of Finance with 39, which is a continuation of 5 Ventures with 39, and would serve as a prelude to Finance with 39 too. The reason for this being so low on the iceberg, I can assume, is simply because of the fact that this game seems to have been forgotten. It has a trailer which, based off of it, seems to be in the 8-bit gameplay style in the same vein as Ventures. The trailer itself was uploaded on September 25th, 2019, which was a while ago. However, besides this trailer, there's really nothing else to it besides some dev blogs dating back to 3 months as of writing this, which are animation tests from Blender, the modeling program 39 uses to model his characters. There's also this devlog from a year ago which features the final boss of Ventures interacting with 39, Blue Bear, Chikisha, and David. That's really it though. I wonder if this fan game will ever be finished. Or it will be left forgotten. Who knows? Emil Mako killed a man. This is the only entry in the last layer of the iceberg that is a complete lighthearted joke. Basically, the joke is basically making fun of the fact that Emil Mako is the only Fazbear Fanverse Initiative developer who doesn't have any actual drama or accusations about him, either currently or in the past. Every other Fanverse developer has been accused of at least something. King Carter for racism, Nixon for transphobia, Visnum for being ableist, and Jonachrim for pedophilia. Because of Emil's rather perfect record, one may say, it's become an inside joke in the community that Emil Mako committed murder on a man. It's honestly pretty funny considering the context. Kellen Goff and Pop Goes Too Official FNAF series voice actor Kellen Goff yet again was going to lend his voice in a FNAF fan game. Except this time, instead of a game that was actually released, this was for a fan game that ended up getting cancelled. Fan game being Pop Goes Too. Kellen Goff was slated to be the voice of Simon. However, the role would end up being taken by Kane himself, so Kellen then was either going to voice Pop Goes the Weasel, Blake the Badger, or Stone the Crow. Since this game ended up getting cancelled, not much else is known. Fan Games Canon to FNAF it has been debated upon for a long time that the FNAF fan games are canon in the official Finance of Freddy's universe. One of the biggest pieces of evidence is that the Finance of Mr. Hugs game the Toy Freddy plays in Ultimate Custom Night, even though it could be perceived as a typical FNAF game parody, some people took it as FNAF fan game representation in official FNAF. If you think that's the only piece of evidence that some people provide, allow me to provide two more. One in Security Breach, and one in Fazbear Frights. The Security Breach one, were already covered earlier in the Iceberg, which is Ignited Freddy and Ignited Bonnie on arcade cabinets in the Fazcade. But it makes you wonder, what other fan games are canon in the FNAF universe? Candies? Popgos? Flumpties? And the other big piece of evidence people provide, Fazbear Frights number 5, Bunny Call. More specifically, the second story, In the Flesh. The Springtrap's Revenge game, created by Matt, a game developer who seems to be a fan. Very interesting in regards to fan game canon. Interesting indeed. Fun Times at Homer's 3 teaser with the N-word. Fun Times at Homer's is a FNAF fan game series created by Nick Pearson which is based on the TV show The Simpsons. There are currently two games of this series and an upcoming third game which the development of which has been paused. There's a lot of drama surrounding this game series and its creator. One of the few examples being how the creator would make fun of players who aren't good at his games. However, what this entry is referring to specifically is how for one of the teasers for the Halted Fun Times at Homer's 3, the n-word can be seen. Not in the teaser image itself, but in the game jewel tagline that was below it, which sadly is now lost to time because it was removed. This understandably got some backlash from people. The developer Nick went on to say he did it because he thought it would be funny, Everyone was still pissed, including Smiler Fusifer, the lead developer of Finance at Sonic's Maniac Mania. Nick would use Smiler as a scapegoat excuse by claiming that Smiler would say the n-word two times without hesitation and nobody would get pissed at him. Some people are still pissed about this to this very day. This goes to show that even teasers for FNAF fan games can cause so much uproar and anger. And controlled anger? Who knows? The Pair 
This entry is referring to how on June 10th, 2022, it was anonymously revealed that fan game developers Raymond, Jr.'s developer, Ultra Knight, Chomper's developer, and Mechless, Project Redusted developer, had a secret group chat called The Pair, which was created for malicious intentions. Their intentions were to use their recognition in the community to manipulate people and to get power on Game Jolt and fan game development teams so they can leak private information about FNAF fan games, fanverse included, and their developers like full names, Facebook profiles, and other personal info in a big file on 4chan. The motivation for this is currently unknown. What's even more worrying is that it's not just fan game developers. Scott Cawthon's private wedding video and many pictures of him and his family that were not public are in this group chat. Kane Carter eventually came out with a response on Twitter to clarify the situation in more detail. He also informed Scott about all of this going on about him. As well, screenshots of the pair started to surface, which had proof of them planning these fan game leaks and information doxing, as well as using transphobic and sexist slurs against critics of their games, and being misogynistic to women, especially towards Popgo's artist and Kane's girlfriend, Turntail. Speaking of Popgo's and Kane, Ultra Knight had a very spiteful attitude towards Kane and would intentionally target him for these leaks and personal info doxing. These three developers even went as far as to purposefully trying to make old accounts to bump down fan games that were on the Game Jolt's FNAF Best section they considered unworthy and moved up their own games. As well, this whole situation has even led Raymond to leave the FNAF community after Juniors and Chompers getting cancelled. It's very unfortunate that these trusted developers would attempt to do something like this. It's horrible. It's even more horrible that the work of the dev teams will now be overshadowed by their terrible directors, especially Chomper since that game got cancelled. What's even more baffling was that Chompers and Juniors were both considered for the Fazbear Fanverse initiative, and Juniors would get a sequel from that, but because of this, Scott rejected them because of the whole situation. It's all very fucked. The first FNAF fan game. One of the absolute biggest misconceptions in the whole FNAF fan game industry among people is that Five Nights at Treasure Island is the first FNAF fan game. Believe it or not, Treasure Island is not the actual first. It was just the first popular fan game. There has actually been multiple fan games before Treasure Island's release, and through a lot of time and energy dedicated to looking back on the new section of Game Jolt to get the very first FNAF fan game, it was eventually found. The first Fight at Freddy's fan game is Freddy Fazbear's Pizza Massacre, releasing on November 6, 2014. The fan game is basically revolved around you shooting SFM models of the FNAF 1 animatronics at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Now this game is your typical shooter game, just admittedly not in the best quality. However, this shooter game was the first of so many games to follow. It's kinda sad. It's kinda heartbreaking. This game's been sorta... forgotten. I saved these next two for last. The reason being... These two entries are ones that make me feel the most uncomfortable out of all of them. Nothing else on this iceberg comes close to these two. These two entries can only be described as twisted, fucked up, sickening, heartbreaking, awful, and criminal. Five Nights at the Haunted House. This is a very messed up one. So as you probably already know, there are shitty ass mobile FNAF games on the Google Play Store, some of them even costing money, and to an extent, they count as FNAF fan games. However, there's one of those in that category that stands out for the wrong reasons. That one being Five Nights at the Haunted House. This game was given attention when YouTuber Andy Matronic made a video playing these terrible mobile FNAF games and played this one and discovered the absolutely horrible truth about this game. This game, at the beginning before the night starts, it cuts to newspaper articles you would expect in a lot of FNAF games or fan games to have. However, there are two newspapers in this game that use two actual missing people, and not just missing, but are confirmed to be deceased. This is not a joke. This is real. The first newspaper of which depicts Suzanne Bombardier, a real 14 year old girl who in 1980 was kidnapped, sexually assaulted, stabbed to death, 
was reported missing and was found dead in a river a week later. And the second newspaper of the two depicts Tammy Niver, a real 24-year-old woman who was a mother of two young children who in 1993 went missing and was murdered. These were two actual missing people that were murdered in presumably very brutal ways. And to think that their impact and contributions to the world all amounted to them being victims of a fictional burnt down location incident that now haunt the place's plot point in a shittily made FNAF mobile game is absolutely disgusting, revolting, sickening, terrible, offensive, and upsetting. And not to mention, very fucked. Very fucked up. At the very least, this game was taken off the Google Play Store because of this. Justice well fucking served. This game sickens me. Nichi slash Blackout. The last entry on the iceberg. And just like the last entry, this one is also sickening. If you remember from an earlier entry on the iceberg, Dormant Abyss's story, this is the lead developer we're talking about finally. Nichi slash Blackout has a lot of accusations to his name. From being a hypocrite about a lot of things, has examples making fun of trans people even though he's claimed to be trans, making fun of furries even though he's found furry porn hot before, is a confirmed necrophile, supports Nazis, racist, manipulative, has fetishes consisting of people getting raped or assaulted or abused, blackmails people, but the biggest one of all is that he's a confirmed pedophile. He has sent nudes to minors and has tried to receive nudes from the minors he's interacted with. He would lie about his age consistently. He's done a lot, and if it's not obvious already, Garvey isn't just a William Afton variation. Garvey Wright is a representation and self-insert of Nietzsche. Both are pedophiles and love the concept of rape, especially against children. There has never been a fan game developer that has been more disgusting than this genuine sack of shit. Not even Jonochrome was this bad. Nietzsche deserves to be locked away, get his testicles cut off, to be beeped to a pulp, and never interact with any children ever again. Rape sucks, child rape sucks, the lore of Dormitibus sucks, Garvey Wright sucks, and most of all, most importantly, Nietzsche fucking sucks. And that was the ultimate FNAF fangame iceberg. That was a lot. And let me just say, the FNAF fangame world is very interesting. I hope you guys enjoyed, and until next time, sleep well. Mm -hmm. <laughs>